In the United States, 2024 will be a year of regulations and creating an appropriate regulatory framework. America is embracing digital assets and cryptocurrencies, and the legislation around them will be crucially critical the following week. 2024 will be a huge year, and 2025 will be much bigger. This year saw the start of the cryptocurrency bull run, which will continue into 2025 for a second cycle that will be larger than the initial wave in 2024. Lauren Belief from Ripple is now here to talk about their stablecoin RLUSD. They work closely with governments worldwide, as such as the New York DFS Financial Services, the U.S. Treasury, and the U.S. Fed. Furthermore, it doesn't go any bigger than the layers of government, as Linda P. Jones noted. It doesn't get much bigger than this, guys. In fact, Ripple collaborates with the 1% of entities that run our planet and system. Lauren Belief is the head of U.S. public policy at Ripple. Watch this video together, please. But Ripple's work enables global financial institutions, businesses, governments, and developers to move, manage, and tokenize value. So we're excited to have Lauren here today to speak with us, tell us more about Ripple's policy engagement efforts in Washington, D.C., and how everything's going with crypto heading into kind of the end of the year, the second half of the year. So Lauren, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Obviously, you know, with I feel like like so many things at Ripple, like the the hits don't stop. I mean, I'd be, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, you all announced you'll be launching a, a stablecoin here in the near future. You know, how do you think about um, that? You know, specific new product, Lauren, in the context of uh, of the stablecoin, you know, economy and the benefits there, and how does it fit into you know kind of the broader picture as you as you touched on, um, you know, with enabling commerce and and transactions. No, it's this is absolutely thrilling. You know, in in terms of taking a step back, Ripple has enabled the crypto solutions for businesses around the world. We are in 67 countries. We've launched payment systems and pilot pilots from Brazil, South Korea, Palau, and you have to really think about what that means for like the general globalization of the world. The next step is stablecoin, and we are really excited about this launch. We keep hearing from our customers, this is a customer demand, that they want a common dollarized method of transaction, and it's wi that is widely available and always on. And so we hope that this will be the right fit for our existing business channels. And it, it, there's so much opportunity here. Today, the stablecoin market is about $150 billion, um, and we have not entered that market yet. And we expect this market to exceed nearly $3 trillion by 2028. That was independent research that was done. And um, I think that clear demand is showcasing that the trust, stability, and utility from a company that is compliance first, which Ripple is, would be an ideal player. And um, we're looking to have this um, pegged to both the XRP ledger and the Ethereum networks. And tell us more about where that um, syncs up with the government, you know, and, and where are their kind of partnership opportunities for you all with government on moving stable coins forward? Yeah, well, currently, we are working very closely with the New York DFS. Um, and that's a focus for us. Um, and we are complying with all current law, um, both mostly through the state level. Um, but what's very exciting is, as we speak, the Congress is negotiating a stablecoin bill um, between um, Chairman McHenry and Ranking Member Waters. I know the Senate is involved, the Treasury is involved, the New York uh, Fed is involved, as is the state. And so that's something that could really set a great pathway, hopefully for both state pathways to have jurisdiction over this, as well as having a federal oversight. Um, and then we would be able to have the regulatory clarity, not only to operate in the country, but also to identify really good U.S banking partners and have that business relationship and the security around that business relationship that we want to pursue. And is the same thing happening globally for you all as well? Yes. Yes. It's definitely a global market. Um, and we're seeing actions, you know, across the board, both in the EU, UK, Singapore. Um, and so this is something that, that we can see uh, start in the U.S. with our launch and expand. Um. Ripple has entered nearly every market and XRP is utilized in those markets. States Bank of India, or SBI, has released new digital banking initiatives. UPI Tap and Pay, Yono Business for Small Businesses, Corporate Internet Banking Enhancement, UPI Lite, 
for transactions under INR 500, automated loan status notifications, digital loans against mutual funds on YONO, streamlined Suragar loan process, 35 new agricultural centralized processing cells, simplified rural management for startups, higher transaction limits for smaller businesses, and MSME Saha for invoice financing are just a few of the features that we provide. In addition, the State Bank of India makes use of XRP. In fact, XRP is used by the BRICS nations. We have from India, Rupee, SBI, ISIC, PMB, Bank of Dakota, NFT, INPS, UPI, and BHIM. That is all there is to it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.